Welcome back. In today's video, we are gonna be tearing apart the 6-0 block. It was hydro-locked at one point, and I wasn't really happy with the way that one cylinder looked from last time in the video. So I also got some plastic gauge, so we're gonna measure all the bearing clearances, the, the main bearing caps, and the rod bearings with this, uh, so I can order the right bearing sizes. And then we're gonna hit um, that cylinder and probably the rest of them with this uh, flex hone. I made sure this is the right size for the bore that I have. And finally, we're going to use these to clean up the block itself and all the mating surfaces. Um, so the top of the head, front of the motor, piston tops, I'm gonna hit with this and everything's gonna be nice and clean for when I go to reassemble. So by the, the end of this video, I should have the block all cleaned up and ready for reassembly. All right, so first order of business, we're gonna get all these rod caps off and then stick our plastic gauge in there, torque it all down to spec, and then check our rod bearing clearances. It's pretty much right at 0 0.002, so two thousandths of an inch. And that's actually within clearance, so looks pretty good there. Yep, perfectly right at two thousandths of an inch. Right where we wanna be. We wanna be right between like two and three thousandths of an inch is where the uh, spec calls for. Looking good. I mean, I don't think I really need to go through every single one. So I'm probably just gonna end up taking all the pistons out now and then checking the crank next. Good thing I'm checking everything out. Most of these main bearings were down to copper. Look at that. Some have kind of uneven wear. I think this one. Yeah, check that out. So, good thing I'm going through everything. So now, next step is to use Plasti Gauge on the main bearings. Now these require actually a different clearance. So I'm gonna have to switch to the green plastic gauge instead of the red one. These are rated for different tolerances, so to go through and make sure that they're for the mains. So same process as before. Uh, you take a little bit of plastic gauge, 
stick it on your main bearings here torque everything back down to how it would be from the factory take them all back off and then measure them Yeah, so the edge of this thrust bearing was all down to copper too. That's why I had a ton of thrust per play and I think these were the original bearings. After taking everything apart and really inspecting things closely, I kind of can see what's going on with this motor. So remember I was saying that um, all these bearings pretty much are down to copper, so See, the, the main bearings are all the rod bearings down to copper. And what I'm seeing is, if you look at one of these bearings here, um, you could see the date stamp of 2016. So this was rebuilt fairly recently. And you have a, another stamp of 0 0.010. So that means that the actual journals on the crank were resized smaller because they were polished or you know regrinded so they had to put in bigger bearings to make up for that clearance difference so if you don't have that exactly right when you put in fresh bearings and oversized bearings those tolerances could be way too tight and i feel like that's what happened here so they reassembled everything all the clearances were tight and then after only a couple years, everything got worn down because there wasn't enough oil to go between the bearing and the crank surface. So I feel like that's what's going on. The other thing that's interesting is if you look at the um, main bearings, looking at the front one, the, only the side of this one is worn. This one's okay, this one's okay, this one's okay. And then you look at underneath a lot of them don't have uniform wear and and that would tell me that the bores in the block are out of alignment or the actual crank is bent or some of the journals are oval so i'm probably going to end up bringing this bottom end to the machine shop and having them like tri triple check everything and actually make sure that i'm buying the right bearings option number two is to take the crank out of this car because again this car only has like 30,000 miles throw that crank in this motor and hope that the line hone is actually straight regardless i'm going to now um, fix that one cylinder so if you remember from last time there was some pitting issue in this uh cylinder right here so i'm going to take my flex hone and just hone all the cylinders fresh and then take my bristle wheels and then make all these surfaces nice and fresh again too. So if you've never seen a flex hone before, they're actually really good tools. A lot of people give them a bad rep because people say they're for junkyard build or garage build or whatever. And they actually do a really good job if you really pay attention to what you're doing. So the cross hatching on cylinders are supposed to be 45 degrees of cross hatching. So in order for this to work properly, you have to make sure that the RPM of your drill and the speed in which you're going in and out of the cylinder to re-hone that is correct or else you'll get a uneven cross hatching. The other thing is they, they sell different types of grit and it really depends on what type of rings you're gonna put in the motor. So pay attention to the different grits. Um, they actually make an industrial version of this, which has more beads and can handle a lot more engine rebuilds and abuse. This is probably only gonna last me, you know, one hone and then be toast, but 
we'll see how that goes. Um, you're also, you have, you have to make sure you lubricate the cylinder, obviously. So they recommend using their own uh, Flexone oil or um, it, it's, it's like a cutting compound um, or use your like 5W30, 5W40. All right, so we're gonna take our motor oil, put some in the cylinder. Get some on here. All right, you, you wanna go in and out pretty quickly. And they said uh, the job should take about 25, 30 seconds. So just keep going in and out with it. Count to like 25 to 30 seconds and you should be good. some uh, some pitting there so I'm gonna hit it a little bit more I think okay pitting is almost gone. I think I'm gonna hit it one final time. I'm just gonna run my finger over where that pitting was, just see if it catches. Still feeling it a little bit, so. Hit it one more time. It's definitely less and less visible with each pass, so that's good. Looking pretty good, I think. Okay, so these are called Roloc discs. They're made by 3M. You can get these on Amazon, uh, but they're really good for cleaning up iron block mating surfaces. I would not use these on aluminum, uh, but these yellow ones are medium grit, uh, and these are supposed to be good for the iron block cleanup. <music> I think that's gonna do it for today's episode. Um, as you guys can see, the block looks really good. The bores are nice and cleaned up. Um, I think I'm just gonna have this sent to the machine shop anyways, just to double check everything over. But uh, yeah, we're looking good. Still didn't really get that one spot um, totally cleared up. I don't know if you can see it from this camera. Um, so I might have the machine shop really do a more extensive bore, bore these out a little bit to clean up that one spot. Um, but overall, I think that Flex Home did a really, really good job. If you guys have any recommendations on my uh, bearing situation, the fact that these are fairly new bearings and they're all worn out and possibly something to do with the crank, let me know, any suggestions are good. 
And then the next episode, I'm also going to be taking this block out and disassembling it to see what's salvageable. Well, I just wanna also say thank you to all the new subscribers. You guys are really helping a lot to grow the channel and make sure to comment if you have any questions or you're working on something similar to like I'm doing with my project. Um, it's been a lot of fun and interesting adventure. So it's nice to share it with you guys.